So we've got a new version of the Minty Pie ready to go for you guys. It's an update to version 3.0, which a lot of people were kind of sad to see disappear. And I honestly didn't even think that I was gonna need to do a video for this one because the plan was just to find a screen that could replace the old one that had been discontinued, update the parts, and then make those available to you guys again. But we wound up changing and adding a couple of things that I wanted to make sure that you guys saw. So today I'm gonna to show you what's new and what you need to know when you're putting together version 3.5 of the Minty Pie. Now I'm gonna try and keep this pretty short, but if you're new here, uh, the Minty Pie is a do-it-yourself gaming handheld based on the Raspberry Pi that you put together yourself inside of an Altoids Mint tin. Now I'm not gonna go really in depth as far as what kind of games it can play and that kind of thing. I've covered all of that several times now at this point, uh, but I'll link to a couple of videos below uh, that are still applicable to this version. So before I get into it, we do have pre-orders open right now uh, for all the parts that you need to put one of these together. So if you've been wanting to do that, now's your chance. I'll put a link to that in the description. We'll keep those open for the next week or so. And if you have access to a 3D printer and you wanna be able to print out your own parts, uh, once the pre-orders are closed, I'll put all the STL files for doing that up on Patreon for supporters to download. Uh, and then as usual, a couple weeks after that, I'll put them up on Thingiverse. Also, like it says in the title, we are giving a fully built one of these away. Uh, so again, if you want to enter to win that, check the link in the description. I'm also not going to go really in depth as far as every single step that you need to do to put it together um, because about 95% of it is exactly the same as version 3.0. So my hope is that you'll be able to watch this video to see what's new and different and then go back and watch the version 3.0 build guide and you'll be able to put it together pretty easily that way. If you need help or you want to talk about this or any other project, check out our Discord server. There's a link at the top of pseudomod.com and I'll also drop a link to it below in the description. All right, so what's new in this version? Well, first of all, the screen. The one that we had been using in version 3.0 had been discontinued, uh, so that's why our parts for putting them together were no longer available. So this is the new screen. It's the same size and resolution as the old one. The horizontal viewing angles look a little bit better to me. I'm not sure if they actually are, or maybe it's just because of the matte finish on this one compared to the glossy finish on the old one, uh, but to my eyes, it looks a little bit better. The actual physical size of the screen is just a little bit taller than the old one, which means that in this one, it is incredibly important that it gets positioned just right, otherwise it's going to catch on the lip of the bottom part of the tent. In previous versions, what I had recommended was to take the screen back plate, put it in the bottom part of the tin with some tape, close the lid, and that will more or less position it right in the middle, which was good enough for version 3.0 but it doesn't quite cut it for this one. So here's what I came up with to make it easier to align it just right. If you look at the screen back plate, you can see that there's this brim that goes around the top that is just barely connected to the rest of the part. The idea is that you can apply some VHB tape and then press that brim against the top lip of the lid and press everything into place. Then you should be able to grab this raised part of that brim and pop it right off. After you do that, it should be lined up just right. You should still test it out by putting in the bezel and slowly opening and closing it to make sure it doesn't catch though. If it does, you should be able to carefully pull the back plate out of the tin and use the brim to line it up again. I've tested this a bunch of times though at this point and nine times out of 10, it puts it in just the right position. So the next thing that I wanna point out is the buttons. And this isn't necessarily something that you need to know for putting it together, uh, but it's something really cool that I wanted to point out. This time, instead of using conductive traces on the board like we used before, we've got these low profile dome style tactile switches. This is something Helder added to his Burger King Game Boy Color boards as an option, and he added it as standard here in version 3.5 of the Minty Pie. The silicone buttons that we already use work with these dome switches, and it adds a nice tactile click when you press it in, sort of like a Nintendo Switch makes it much easier to hit diagonals and just overall feels a lot better. Uh, so yeah, I was kind of skeptical at first when he mentioned it, but I'm a big fan of this change. The LNR board has those same switches on it, only this time, as you can see, we've got L2 and R2 buttons as well, which comes in super handy for a lot of PlayStation games. Now, if you're only doing L1 and R1, then you can still use the silicone buttons for the L and R buttons. You'll just still need to trim them down as usual. But if you are doing L2 and R2 buttons, then you can use these resin printed button caps that I made. They stick out just the right amount and they feel really nice and you don't have to trim them down like you do for the silicone ones. Another thing if you are doing L2 and R2 is you'll need to connect a couple of wires from these points on the L and R button board uh, to the main PCB. 
And that's because we were already using all of the wires going from the power board to the button PCB. So doing it this way, let us use those same connectors and it makes the L2 and R2 buttons optional as well. You just need two pieces of wire a few inches long. Uh, I used 30 gauge silicone coated wire. One last thing worth mentioning is I'm using a different style of screw in the kits that I'm sending out this time. They're self-tapping, sort of like wood screws, instead of these laptop style screws with a tiny thread pitch that I was using before. They go in much easier with far fewer turns, so yeah, it's a lot easier to put together this time. Uh, Helder is actually the one that pointed me to those screws, so thanks to him for that. All right guys, well I think that about covers everything. If I forgot anything or if I need to go back and correct anything, uh, then I'll do that in the blog post that I'll link to in the description. That's also where you'll be able to go to enter to win one of these, so definitely check that out. Last but not least, a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. Uh, you'll see their names at the end of this video as usual. Uh, I really appreciate that guys. All of that goes towards paying for hosting fees for the website, uh, supplies and parts for new projects and things like that. So again, Thank you, I do appreciate that. So if you made it this far, then thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.